Watch out for the support aircraft. It was back in late September 2022 when the Steam version or the Flatpak version of Batocera suddenly stopped working. Many assumed it was because of the latest release of Batocera 35, since it was released around the same time. The truth is that the Batocera team was not at fault for Steam no longer working in Batocera. Instead, it was due to a Steam client update that broke Steam functionality in Batocera. After two long months of waiting for a fix, I'm delighted to report that Steam is once again working in Batocera as of December of 2022. As a matter of fact, the awesome game Ace Comeback 7 you're watching on your screen is playing on the Steam version of Batocera on the NVIDIA PC system. We can finally enjoy Steam in Batocera again. In this video, I will give you a quick crash course to get Steam working in Batocera. I will also highlight and discuss the differences of Steam running on a NVIDIA system, on an Intel Iris XE graphics system, and on the Steam Deck. I will also share my final recommendation in case you want to build the ultimate Batocera PC system. Are you ready? Well, let's do it. Greetings everyone and welcome to Batocera Nation, the number one fan site and channel for Batocerans. So glad that you could join us today. Before we jump into Steam, let me go ahead and share with you my three test Batocera systems. First up, we have an ASRock mini computer running an Intel i7-1165 G7 using integrated Intel Iris XE graphics. My second test system is an Intel NUC 11 also running on an Intel i7-1165 G7 with a dedicated NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 GPU. And of course, my final test system is the Steam Deck running on the AMD APU using RDNA 2 GPU. With that out of the way, let's load up Batocera and Steam. All right, so when Batocera, let's go ahead and press F1 on the keyboard. And let's go into Applications. And then from there, go to Flatpak Config. All right, and from there, go make sure you type Steam, if you have not done so yet. And from there, go ahead and install it. You'll see an install button there, if you've not done it before, okay? After you install Steam, the next thing you need to do, you need to type Proton. If it's not doesn't show up here, go ahead and type Proton. Now, in this case, it does show up right here. Uh, and I noticed that among all these protons, the best ones that give you the best results for your Steam games are the ones that say Community Build. So go ahead and install this one, Proton Experimental Community Build, uh, and this one as well. All right. Once everything has been installed, uh, close everything out, and then go ahead and reboot the system. And there you are, that will give you the best results. Okay. Once your system is rebooted, So once your system is rebooted, then go ahead and look for the application or flat pack. I'll say you the application or flat pack. Okay, and this particular theme, it says flat pack. Go ahead and choose it. And from there, go ahead and choose Steam. Make sure you connect it to the internet. And there it goes. And then from there, go into your library. Uh, and also make sure, go to Steam, go to Settings, go to Steam Play, make sure that this is enabled, okay? And then for the Advanced section, go ahead also click on that one there too. Uh, run other titles with, go ahead and choose one of the community builds from Proton. Bring it up again here. Choose this one, or choose the latest version. In this case, right now, it's Proton 7.0-5 Community Bill. Go ahead and choose that one, okay? That probably will give you some of the best results. And from there, go into Controller section. Go into General Controller Settings. And then from there, if you have any trouble with controller, use like an Xbox type of controller, and then go ahead and switch, and go ahead and click on this. 
If you, on the other hand, if you use a PlayStation controller, then go ahead and choose this one up here on top. Okay. All right. And then from there, go ahead back and uh, press OK. So as I will tell you this, restart required. Go ahead and click on that. Restart, re restart Steam. And then we'll reload everything up. Okay, it's reloaded. But go back to your library. And then from there, you can start installing your games, okay? Okay, once your game has installed, and it won't play automatically, then go ahead and right-click on the game itself. Go into Properties. And go into this right here. And then you can also choose right here. Choose that, uh, and then try experiment with the one will give the best results. Normally, it's this one right here, the community bill. Okay, but if that doesn't work, then try some of the other ones. Okay, including all the way down to Proton 4.11-13. Okay, all right. You can close that up. Once more, make sure you test everything out here first uh, before you go back to Battle Set or you go into Big Picture mode. Okay. So once you got your games installed, and once you got them tested and everything is working fine, uh, then of course you can exit or go into big picture mode. All right, right now I'm gonna go ahead and exit. All right, from there I'm gonna go ahead and get out of this and press start in gamepad and go into game settings, update games list. And from there, you look for your Steam folder. And there it is. Okay. And from there, you can go ahead and scrape it. Finally, they got the scraper working for Steam. Just go ahead and scrape your games, okay? And let it do its thing, okay? For the most part, it will find most of the games from Steam. Now then, if you're using this in a PC system, not Steam Deck, then you can use this interface that's found in Batocera. Uh, in other words, so let's say, for example, you want to play this game. You can load it up or load up the game, get out of the game, or bring it right back to this interface. And from there, you can go ahead and choose another game altogether, right? And from there, you can load up this game if you want to play. Unfortunately, there's a bug using the Steam Deck. If you try to use this interface, for some reason, it will load up the first game. But if you get out of that game, try to go on the next game, it will not load up. Somehow, it tends to crash. Hopefully, one of the developers will look into this and hopefully find a solution, a fix for this. So, therefore, if you're playing these games on the Steam Deck, your best bet is to go ahead and load a big picture mode and play your Steam games from there. But again, if you're using a PC system, this interface will work quite well without having to load up Steam or big picture mode. Now then, if you don't want to use this and you just want to use big picture mode, then of course, just go ahead and do that instead. Uh, go back to flat pack. And from there, go ahead to Steam. And from there, go ahead and choose Steam up here. Go into Settings. Go into uh, Interface. And from there, just choose Start Steam in Big Picture Mode. Okay. You select that, press OK. And then every time you load up Steam from Flatpak, it will automatically go into Big Picture Mode. You can do all your gaming, exit, and you'll be good to go. All right. It's up to you. Now then, let me go ahead and give you an analysis of Steam running on the Intel, NVIDIA, and Steam Deck, all right? Now then, let me go ahead and give you a sample video montage of some gameplay and analysis of my Intel Iris XE system. Foremost, the majority of your 2D and non-demanding Steam library games should run really well without any trouble. In addition, I have a number of space shooters in my Steam library. Again, the vast majority ran extremely well, including Daria Burst, Chronicle Savers, and my current favorite space shooter, Power Rumi. Indeed, if you like space shooters and you haven't checked out Power Rumi, then do yourself a favor and check it out, since it's a gorgeous and fun space shooter. If you like playing the classic Batman games, I'm happy to report that Batman Arkham City, Batman Arkham Origins, and Batman Arkham Knight all load up and run on the Intel system. However, there are some stuttering issues here and there, and Arkham Knight is sluggish at times. The LEGO games are also loading up and playing rather well, including the latest Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. So if you love the LEGO games, then these should run well on the Intel Iris XE system. There are a number of classic and old PC games that also run well, like Star Wars Starfighter, as well as classic remakes like Castle of Illusion and DuckTales Remastered. 
I was most surprised to discover that Crisis 2 Maximum Edition ran rather well on the Intel system. Other surprises were a Panzer Dragoon remake, Ace Combat Assault Horizon Enhanced Edition, Team Sonic Racing and Street Fighter V. Consequently, among my tests of 30 plus games, approximately 70% of the games worked well on my Intel Iris XT system. Now then, let's move on to our NVIDIA system. Let me go ahead and give you some analysis of the NVIDIA system when compared to the ASRAC mini computer we saw earlier. Foremost, the NVIDIA system can play every game that the ASRAC mini Intel computer can play, although in many cases much faster. Indeed, some games that were stuttering on the Intel Iris XC system were running smooth as butter on the NVIDIA system. Furthermore, there were some additional games that the NVIDIA system could play that the Intel Iris XC system could not play. I also noticed that in some games the Intel Iris XC system had some graphical glitches. While on the NVIDIA system, I never saw any graphical glitches. All the test games that worked ran really well. Unfortunately, not all my Steam games ran on the NVIDIA system. For example, I couldn't get God of War to run on my NVIDIA system. Ironically, the NVIDIA system could easily handle such a game, but sadly enough, the NVIDIA drivers are not mature on the SteamOS compared to a Windows system. This is also true if you try to run SteamOS 3 without about to set it on a NVIDIA PC system. Again, this is how things are right now with NVIDIA. The good news is, as of last of May of 2022, NVIDIA finally decided to go open source with their Linux graphics drivers. Therefore, I believe that in 2023, we will see Steam, Linux, and SteamOS run much better, and more games will become compatible. In either case, I would say that my NVIDIA system can run approximately 80 to 85% of my Steam library games. This is clearly an improvement from my Intel Iris XC system. Now then, let's go ahead and test about the set of Steam running on the Steam Deck. Before I share my Steam Deck analysis, let me also share that if you're playing this in a big screen in dock mode, you're going to have to go into Steam, go into Settings, go into Controller, go into General Controller Settings, and from there, you're going to pick the gamepad you're using, whether it's an Xbox type controller or it's a PlayStation controller, okay? Uh, otherwise, the games will not work, okay? And that's it. Now, let's go ahead and proceed with my analysis of the Steam Deck uh, using Steam Battle Set. Finally, let me go ahead and give you some analysis of Steam games running on an AMD APU. By far, the AMD drivers are most evolved and mature on the Steam version of Battle Set. Indeed, a lot of the games that were not running on the Intel or NVIDIA systems were running well on the Steam Deck. This is also true if you tried to run SteamOS without about to set it on an AMD PC system. In short, AMD is able to deliver great performance on most Steam games. Of course, not all Steam games run successfully on the Steam Deck using about to set a SteamOS. The good news, however, is that God of War ran well on the Steam Deck using about to set a Steam. In fact, I would estimate that some 90 to 95 percent of my Steam library ran successfully on my Steam Deck. What's more, these numbers will only get better with time since Valve is continuing to improve Proton and thereby making more games compatible. Consequently, if you want to build a bot to set a powerhouse PC to play both emulators and Steam games, my recommendation is for you to go ahead with a PC system using an AMD graphics card. Furthermore, if you like mini computers, then I highly recommend buying a mini PC using AMD Radeon 680M integrated GPU. In fact, as of early 2023, the Radeon 680M chip will give you the best performance for an APU. Well, that's a wrap. 
If you found this video useful, please go ahead and like it. That would really help me out with YouTube's algorithms. If this is your first time watching a video from Baltasar Nation, then I highly encourage you to check out YouTube channel as well as the website of BaltasarNation.com. That will give you a great overview of what Baltasar is all about and whether this will meet your emulating needs. Finally, I want you to know I've got a lot more videos coming up, so therefore please consider subscribing so that you'll stay on top of the latest and greatest of Batocera. As a matter of fact, next time, I plan to revisit an old emulator that's given us a hard time in the past. Thankfully, with Batocera 35, the emulator and its games are running finally really smooth as butter. Again, that video is coming soon, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time about the Nation. Bye.